Okay, here we're looking at resource partitioning. See just an example here of uh, a variant here where we have sunny, dry conditions on the left and shady, moist conditions on the right. And there's different species that are going to favor the sunny and dry environment versus the shady and moist environment. So we call this research par resource partitioning. And this is formulated in the principle of competitive exclusion, which states that no two species with the same niche can coexist. So the principle of this competitive exclusion, we see kind of an example of that here, uh, can be restated as no two species can occupy the same niche indefinitely. So here we have the yellow birds occupying the ground, the trunk of the tree, and the, t and the top portion. Then these red birds move in, and there's competition. And we notice now that the yellow birds are located at the very top of the tree and also on the ground, while the red birds are occupying the trunk of the tree. It's an example of competitive exclusion as part of resource partitioning. So let's look at specific at this resource partitioning. Well, this is when niches overlap, uh, two outcomes are possible. One is that competitive exclusion, or really this resource partitioning that we're seeing. So we have a tree here. There's different bird species that will occupy different portions of the tree. Some are going to be located at the very top or apical meristem of the tree. Some will be closer to the ground. Some are going to be in the midsection towards the um, ends here, the ends of the branches, and in this case these bird species are going to be located in that center portion of the tree. All of these warbler species, they're all warblers, they all occupy the same tree, but because of resource partitioning they're occupying different specific niches or different specific areas within the tree. We see here with the lights lighting up on the different areas, these could be examples of different niches within the tree which is going to result of resource partitioning and allow different species to kind of coexist without overlapping any particular physical space uh, habitat in the actual tree. So this research partitioning, a uh, persistent competition is rare in natural communities. Either one species drives the other to extinction or natural selection reduces the competition between them. So an example of this research partitioning is we have hawks and owls. Hawks and owls, they both um, have the same prey, in this case it's mice. So there's a region of niche overlap that's occurring between species 1, we'll just call them the hawks, and species 2, the owls. They're both overlapping and competing for the same mice here. However, due to research partitioning, uh, we have this now separation, we're reducing this overlap. How this happen? Well, we're still feeding on the same um, species here, the hawks and owls are still eating mice, but the hawks are hunting by the day, and the owls at night. This is a way of separating out and reducing the direct competition of both hawks and owls, so they're not competing for the same prey at the same time. Uh, uh, St. Patrick's species occupy the same geographical areas, but they avoid competition by partitioning resources. So here we have two different whale species, and this uh, St. Patrick's species tend to exhibit greater differences than the allopatric one, which we'll talk about in the next slide species do. This is resulting in character displacement, which facilitates habitat partitioning and thus reduces competition. So what's an example of this? Why do I have these pictures here? Well, we have the killer whales here, which have teeth. The reason why they have teeth is they're actively seeking in the ocean, they're actively seeking seals. Here we have a different whale species that has this um, filtration system. They're both living in the same ocean, but these are going through and straining out the small little plankton so that they can feed. So this is sympathetic species. They're occupying the same geographical area, but avoiding competition by feeding on different food items. One's feeding on very small, almost microorganisms here, and the other's feeding on large macroorganisms such as the seals. As a result, one has teeth, and one has a filtration system to push out and strain out those from the water. This is an example of research partitioning with sympathetic, um, sympatric species. In contrast to that, we have research partitioning with allopatric species. These do not live in the same geographic area and thus do not compete. So we have Costa Rica fishing, we have different um, fish species in the Caribbean versus the, the Pacific Ocean. This is an example of allopatric species because they don't live in the same geographic area and therefore do not directly compete with one another.